Hey there guys, how's it going? Welcome to a new video. I'm going to be going over the brand new dino dossiers for the new creatures that are in the Scorched Earth expansion pack for Ark Survival Evolved. If you don't know, Ark Survival Evolved has just released an expansion or a DLC called Scorched Earth. It's got a ton of new dinos in it. It's also got over 50 new items in it and it's a brand new map as well. So one thing that I was thinking when I'm watching the trailer is, damn, what did those new dinos do? Want to know a little bit more about them so here we're going to go over the dossiers learn as much as we can something that might be quite useful for you to know before you jump into your own game by the way also i've got my own uh scorched earth servers going on on pc if you want to join those links down in the description below so first off the death worm species Kanorkoi. uh okay we're not going to do species names it's a carnivore this is basically that massive thing you saw leap out of the ground in the trailer very scary looking indeed so it says this spends most of its time burrowed beneath the desert stand exploding to the surface only to devour its prey in a single bite the only chance of surviving one of these is if its initial lunge misses as it's momentarily immobile afterwards so theoretically that could provide a brief opportunity to escape its territory although i wouldn't count on such luck okay so this thing normally is underground if you get into its territory bam it will come and smash you if it misses get out of the way so it says it spends most of his life underground by through sand and stone tribes only encounter it when they encroach on its territory at which point it unburrows releases carnage fortunately it's stationary um, unburrowed so escaping is fairly straightforward okay so domesticated can you tame this thing it says attempting to tame one of these will almost certainly result in failure and a very painful death any survivors in the desert should avoid this thing uh, and its territory at all costs it doesn't say you can't tame it but you probably shouldn't try i don't know maybe you will be able to tame it uh at the top at the once you're at the end game even so wild what does it say the titanic nori uh arrakis is commonly called the death worm by locals but only half of its name is accurate uh, it's in fact not a worm at all worms are decomposers that gain nutrients from dead or decaying materials while this is a carnivore so big scary comes out of the ground smishes you try and avoid these at all cost next up the mantis uh species i'm not gonna go into these species names time holocene a carnivore and it's aggressive so wild the existence of a creature as such as this uh, mantis both fascinating and frightening not only is it the only recorded insect to develop an impossible digit well, an opposable digit allowing it to grip objects and use tools but it possesses a level of intelligence that is unrivaled among non-human species i've even found clear patterns in the sounds that they make when communicating with its own kind as though it actually has some kind of dialect i would love to study these in more depth but observing these up close is extremely dangerous its size intelligence and ability to pounce on prey from a great distance or ability to pounce on prey from a great distance means that one could quickly get swarmed upon and killed easily so that is a little bit of a scary thing these things are very smart very fast very dangerous so it says domesticated though a dangerous task successfully taming one of these can prove highly beneficial its unique claws allow it to wield melee weapons like spears or pikes in battle well that's something that's brand new uh, and use tools while harvesting resources what is it saying this thing can use a pick well we'll see uh, this makes it deadly as a mount or foot soldier and a highly efficient gatherer so you're telling me this thing is going to be great at uh, hatching down trees, getting flint and stone, as well as holding spears and pikes in its hand? Sounds a bit ridiculous, but I guess we'll have to look into this a little bit further. Definitely one of the first things I'm going to try and uh, try and tame once I get to that level. Next up, we have the Jerboa Wild. Scientifically speaking, uh, it's an adorable little fuzzball and it just wants to hug it forever and, oh and i just want to hug it forever unfortunately being harmless and lovable is uh inadequate as a defensive mechanism in this wasteland and that means that it's the bottom of the food chain it's an easy meal for predators as survivors alike the latter of whom also value its hides these are actually quite decent for hide i think i remember hearing in the uh, community stream as well so this fits into the clade uh into the 
So it generally fits into the, I can't actually read what that says, but it seems to um, snare traits for within both rodents. Oh, I see what kind of animal it is. While it looks similar to some species of kangaroo, at first glance, it's clearly unrelated. So domesticated, how can this help? In addition to being the cutest little companion on the desert, hours of close study and or cuddling has taught me that this is an instinct. Uh, it was an instinctive understanding of this land's weather patterns while the weather is about to change. Oh, so this thing warns you when the weather is about to change. That's kind of interesting. It will start behaving differently. Taking one of these will be useful and it will help you, you know, look over, the, over your shoulder, tell you when the weather is about to change. Uh, not only justification, but I'll take whatever excuse I can get. Okay, so a little, a little guy, good for early on, good for getting food, good for getting hired if you actually want to kill these things. Or if you want to tame some, they're pretty cute and they'll tell you when the weather's going to change. Next up, the jug bug, uh, a herbivore, and it is passive. So wild, this is a fast flying insect that comes in two varieties. Very distinct, only seen in red or green markings on its exoskeleton. Biologically and behaviorally, they are practically the same. The only real difference between the two is the resource they gather in the expandable sacs on their backs. Okay, so we've got different things in the back. So it looks like we've got oil in one and water in the other from those pictures. You can see uh, green markings water and red markings for oil. Okay, so you can use these to get yourself some water or some oil. Uh, so this unique ability allows it uh, to be a target for both the desert's natural predators and human survivors. Finding a green one uh, at the right time could provide to be life-saving. Survivors could use the oil to produce um, for a wide variety of purposes. Domesticate, like any of the insects, uh, it cannot be tamed. So untamable insect, just good for gathering oil and for getting water, which is obviously going to be very good in a desert. Next up, the desert moth. So, wild, like its smaller relatives, uh, it survives by draining plants and vegetables of their nutrients. Uh, given the desolate nature of the region, that makes this rather limited, but fortunately, its relationship with the desert plants is symbolic. In addition to pollinating them, the spores it releases when nourishing um, the, the spores it releases help nourish the, the uh, desert plants. Okay, so is this good for farming? Let's have a look. Domesticated. It's occasionally used as a one-man flying mount, but its ability to produce silk and spores is often considered the more valuable due to its slow fire speed. So maybe this is a bit of a farming dino. Its silk can be weaved into heat dispersing cloth, and its spores gathered for fertilizer or poison. Its saving grace as a mount is its ability to release spores mid-flight, allowing it to act as a primitive bomber during sieges. Okay, so the spores what do they do i can't work out exactly what these spores do i guess i have to play a bit around with them to find that out so when attacked uh, it immediately takes to the air flies almost straight up while releasing spores while the spores are nutritious to most plants they're highly poisonous to most other organisms oh okay so these spores dangerous to actual uh, organisms so i'm guessing humans and dinos but good for your crops i would presume so next up here, we've got the boss. This is the brand new boss. Now, I don't know what kind of creature this is. Someone said in one of my comments section, uh, it's like a, a manticore. And uh, that's what this file is actually named. So I'm guessing that's what these things are called. Basically, it looks like an absolutely beastly dragon wolf scorpion hybrid. Very, very scary. It's the boss of this map. We'll have to see if we can get one of those spawned in. Next up, uh, the Mori Laptops. Interesting one. So wild. This thing seems to be a relative of both uh, Morelodon and the Ceratops, uh, which in itself is rather strange. On top of that, it's developed the ability to store water in its humps like a camel. This makes it part of a critical part of the food chain uh, as it provides predators with both food and hydration. Oh, so you get some water from this from killing it. That's pretty cool. Um, has limited options when it comes to self-defense. I would not recommend taking one into combat. However, so long as survivors don't forget to let it stop by a well every now and then, they will find the creature an invaluable companion. Oh, again, so something that's going to help you get water in the dry desert. So domesticated, survivors discovered how to tap into the water of these things up without harming it. The docile creature became the desert's essential pack animal. Not only can it carry a good amount of weight, but it can provide survivors with a large 
mobile water source that can be in the difference between life and death on any given journey. So that's something I wouldn't have guessed from looking at it. I would have thought maybe it's some kind of berry collector or something, but it seems like this is something we've never seen before. It's a dino which will store water for you, and I guess that's especially relevant in this desert biome. Next up, the rock elemental diet minerals that one's interesting and temperament extremely territorial so this is a this is a big lad let's have a look into this one so this one is like a creature i have no like no creature I've ever encountered there's no biological or historical precedent for it its nearest relatives exist only in legend mythical statues that could come to life like Gollum or prague that means it is all the more dangerous. What survivor could possibly expect a seemingly benign rock formation to suddenly spring to life and attack them? Fortunately, Colossus' massive, uh, massive size makes it quite slow, so I would advise most survivors to flee immediately encountering one in the wild. So the rock elemental uh, slowly absorbs nearby minerals while it's dormant state, which consequently means that its body contains a wealth of metal ingots. If undisturbed, it can maintain this hibernation uh, ad infinitum, but it will viciously attack anyone who encounters it upon its territory. A solitary creature uh, lives alone and will not even protect its own kind interesting domesticated if somehow tamed this could prove to be an invaluable asset particularly in a siege only armor piercing rounds or explosives can harm it at all and it will handily smash through stone structures damn so what is this like the giga of this map i've seen them walking around they're pretty huge so if somehow tamed it definitely gonna have to look into how you tame this one this is a beastly battle dino gonna be useful for pvp although i don't like calling it dino it's almost like a mythical creature so a very interesting one there rock elemental really really like nothing we've seen before in arc Next up, the Thorny Dragon. Wild, though survivors have come to call these uh, reptiles spiny lizards, I believe that its uh, closest known relative is the Australian Thorny Devil. Besides the obvious uh, gap in size, most of the differences between this and its smaller relative lie in its thorns. So, instead of being permanent of parts of skin, uh, the thorns are like spikes or quills that can be removed and regrown. In fact, it's even capable of shooting these spines from its tail as a method of self-defense. And the examination of these projectiles has revealed that they coated in a lethal poison. Damn, that, that does sound deadly indeed. So, domesticated, what can it do? Despite its dangerous spines, it's proven an excellent mount for indirect combat. Its ranged attacks can wreak havoc in, in pitched battles, let's say, particularly if other creatures are taking the enemy's attention. Just be sure to use a proper saddle, strap yourself in securely, and use extreme caution while mounting or dismounting. So a little bit dangerous to mount and dismount this thing. That is, uh, again, pretty unique dinosaur, an aggressive herbivore. Next up, the Vulture. This one is a docile carnivore. Okay, so wild. Uh, these are relatives of something again I can't pronounce. Commonly called lapid facid. Vultures which are native to the sands of the uh, Negev Desert. Like them, it's a carrion bird that feeds on decaying corpses of other animals and is only aggressive when defending its meal. As such, survivors should take note when they see groups of these uh, circling above. It means that a wounded creature or bloody battle may be somewhere below. Uh, interestingly, it is capable of storing raw meat in a separate stomach where it will decay at an accelerated rate. Oh, so finally, something to help you spoil your meat. Here we go. Once spoiled, it will regurgitate the meat for proper consumption. The strong stomach survivor could, in theory, utilize this feature to speedily spoil meat for recipes. Ah, oh, there we go. Finally, something that allows you to spoil meat quicker. So, despite its impressive wingspan, this thing is not suitable as a pack animal. Oh, it's not suitable as a pack animal, interesting. And is surprisingly light. Some survivors have even been known to keep a tame one perched on their shoulder. Hmm. So, not really a huge, like, Argentavis sized thing, like a bit smaller than that. And something you can just carry around with you mainly, by the looks of it, for spoiling meat. Next up, the Wyvern. This is obviously a dragon, an aggressive carnivore, as you would expect. Like its relatives from the island, the dragons, 
uh, Vipera that inhabit the aptly named dragon trenches are creatures straight out of European legend. So wild, aside from the size, the main difference between this and its larger cousin is the former possesses only two legs like an avian. Otherwise, it is quite similar. Oh, interesting. Um, it is quite similar with armored scales, leathery wings, and the ability to spew projectiles from its mouth. Basically, it breathes fire. Uh, nature of these projectiles is tied directly to the color of the dragon scale. Some spit fire, others uh, poison, and others acid and bioelectricity. So this is awesome. They've taken the idea similar to how in Anunnaki, the different types of dragons or wyverns as these are, uh, do different things depending on their color. Fire breathing ones, electric breathing ones, uh, and acid breathing ones. That is really, really cool. And it's going to make you want to get one of each kind to make the most of it. This is obviously a high, high end thing to get in the game. So I can imagine flying around the mount more deadly than dre uh, I can imagine. Oh, sorry, I can imagine no flying mount more deadly. Oh, okay. Than this, its strength, toughness, and ability to rain death upon its enemies makes it unmatched in combat. The few creatures that it cannot immediately overpower, it can outmaneuver. In fact, it is. Um, I can't see what that word is. Pewingly <laughs> suited for a life of. Servitude, servitude, oh, servitude. Despite being such a vicious predator, the ridges on its back form a natural saddle, so no saddle needed, to the point where many riders prefer to ride it bareback. Curious indeed. I know these are going to be quite difficult to tame, but damn, it's a dragon, basically, baby. So that's it for all of the dino dossiers. We've gone over all of them. I hope you guys learned something by going through this with me. I'm sorry about I couldn't pronounce some of these words. The handwriting and the weird words I've never seen before are a little bit difficult, but I definitely learned a lot just from going through these. Hope you guys have it as well. And I know that I want to go out there and tame some of these, and I'm a little bit wiser as to what some of them do, especially the one that carries water as well. I never would have thought that to look at it, but what do you know? These things have some extra kind of abilities that are really useful things that we haven't had in art before and they're going to make the gameplay a little bit more different so thanks for checking out this video guys don't forget to have some huge like button if you did and check out some more of my arc survival evolve videos on my channel and of course subscribe if you're new and you haven't done already Yeah. <laughs> 